Hello again, friends. Welcome back to the death mode playthrough. Uh, episode 14. Right? I think. Probably episode 14. It's been a little bit longer than usual since I recorded because, uh, in my community tab, because I do post there, for those who aren't aware, um, I mentioned how I was, like, super, super out of it because I had, uh, lost some sleep in the previous day and so as a result of that i decided to push this upload to tomorrow which is sunday um because i didn't want to be recording like super tired and dead and do some really awful wall of flesh attempts so yeah this uh, came out a little bit later but in response to that i uploaded an extra drowned vod which is hopefully a cool compromise uh so yeah that was a thing. I'm sure those of you who are watching this could tell and didn't need me to tell you that. Just figured I'd clarify some stuff. Um, so yeah, today is pretty dang exciting because we are fighting the Wall of Flesh. We have four attempts. Of course, I have to wait for the guide to respawn if I lose, which I probably will lose at least once. Um, because most likely we probably don't have a perfect setup for the fight. Um, like, this is a decent chunk of space, but arguably it could pretty easily be too small um probably don't want to fall straight into lava that doesn't help very much uh but yeah that's uh that's the current situation i'm like super hyped because today uh over on twitch which if you're not following me on twitch you should do it it's cool and good um there is a playthrough exclusive to my twitch channel just like there's one on youtube and today i beat supreme calamitous which is super exciting um the Death Mode Supreme Calamitous fight is so fun. It is so fun. Um, I was going into the fight expecting to maybe have a miserable time and, and to, to suffer over and over and over again. Um, but no, I loved the Supreme Calamitous fight. It was so good. It's so much more fun on Death Mode than it is in Normal Mode. Um, to the point that I was just fighting it over and over again. Uh, it took me three attempts to win. Uh, on my fourth attempt, there's uh, a video that I uploaded today where I fought Supreme Calamitous on death mode and managed to no hit up to 10%, which is the fourth, uh, fifth bullet health phase for those who are wondering. Um, I think. I'm not positive, actually. But yeah, I, I uploaded that, and so I was just having a blast fighting Supreme Calamitous, and I, you know, I died a bunch of times before and after that, but... Um, yeah, it was just so, so fun. I really love that fight. Um, I know it isn't everyone's cup of tea because it's also super hard. Uh, I think I just happened to have a really nice build and and it felt kind of natural since I had already done a lot of attempts on normal Supreme Calamitous, so I knew all the, all the patterns, right? Um, so I definitely understand some people, you know, if they struggle, how they could grow to dislike the fight, but... Honestly, my experience with the fight was amazing. That is so, so fun. Um, so yeah, that has just made me look forward to doing it on the YouTube playthrough all the more, right? Um, so, boss rush is next, <laughs> basically. So if you want to see me fail at boss rush, I think tomorrow, which is Monday, I'm going to be doing more death mode playthrough on stream, and uh, I'll begin boss rush attempts, which will hopefully go well, and will probably go awful. Because... Uh, <laughs> It's probably going to be super duper hard, and I'm going to screw up a lot. But yeah, um, it is super cool. Uh, as I mentioned before, the speedrun Discord is still in the works. I still need to get some more peeps uh, ready for the potential storm that might come when I make it public. Uh, though then again, there might not be that many people who join. It might be a little bit more uh, aim that I'm giving it credit for. Um, but either way, no matter what happens, I definitely want a, a few more people in there before I open up the floodgates. And I also would like to get, like, a guide or two in there as well, because that would help. Anyway, enough uh, riffraff, enough lava slimes, preferably. Let's uh, get down to business and fight Wall of Flesh. Should be fun. So basically, my strat with the lionfish is to get rid of some hungry, not all of them. It's a, uh, it's, I think it's a fool's errand to try and remove all the hungry with uh, lionfish. And then once I have the ability to do so, just start throwing in lionfish against the wall itself as much as I can. 
Right, I think I'm gonna try and shut up for the rest of the fight, just so I have my like the best chance of winning, so. Excuse me if I get a little bit quiet. Ooh, that was bad. Uh-oh, this bridge is way too short. Well, this fight's about to get quite interesting. Oh, there was another leech. <laughs> yeah, I need to extend that bridge a lot, and I need to get more hits in, for sure. I'm not dealing anywhere near enough damage right now, because... Um, I'm just not landing enough lionfish. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, like, houses in the way as well, which is not helping at all, right? So I need to clear out a lot of the houses so that I can land more lionfish, and I need to extend the bridge a considerable amount. So let's get to work on that, shall we? So the neat thing about fighting Wall of Flesh the second time is right here in front of your face. It's all these hearts on the ground, um, which drop from the hungry. You can't really get them during the first fight, which is a little bit uh, annoying and frustrating. But because you get another attempt, you can leave the hearts on the bridge. Just, you know, jump over each one of them. And then during the fight, you get some free heals, which is pretty nice. <gasps> Adrenaline. More adrenaline. All right, here's a nice open area. That's good. We have a very claustrophobic underworld at the moment. Oh, and there's a building. So, I stand corrected. Highly damaging pickaxe. Wall of Flesh is despawned, no more adrenaline bursts. Guy should come around at some point eventually. And uh, then we will have another shot at it. And hopefully a much better shot this time around. I feel like Archerfish is probably the ideal way to take on this boss. Um, just because it has that really nice range. Um, and it might have piercing, I forget. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if it has piercing, it's amazing, at the very least. So... If I really struggle to beat it with lionfish, I've beat it with lionfish before, um, but if I can't seem to pull it off um, within a fair few attempts, then I could always just try and do a ranged loadout and that would be fine. We just have to kill a slime god again, get another statagel helmet for ranged, and get some accessories for it as well. Though I think our accessories are just general anyway, so... I'll also start building Rage while I'm doing this, actually, because it'll be nice to have Rage uh, towards the end phase of the fight where things are getting a little bit crazy and uh, the shots that I land are a lot more important. So if I can give them that extra bit of damage, that could be uh, the difference maker. I think perhaps in the future I should start um, going to the very edge of Hell and then from there coming back around and constructing the rest. Because, for those who don't know, I'm sure most people do, but just in case, the uh, obsidian houses only spawn in the inner third, I think, of the world. And then they stop spawning once you get to, like, right here, for example. So the rest is just a clear shoot through. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to be completely open areas like this. The hell can still get pretty claustrophobic, even when you get rid of the obsidian houses. But yeah, so... If you're fighting the Wall of Flesh and want to really set up an ideal situation, start on the right side, specifically for Calamity, um, of the Underworld. That way you don't have as many Obsidian Houses to deal with, and additionally, because you're on the right side of the world, you won't have to deal with the Obsidian Hell Crag biome thing, which is Calamity-specific. Uh, that always spawns on the left, for those who don't know, so... Oh, hey, there still is Obsidian House. <laughs> nice. Proven wrong immediately. And eventually. That's what I know. Those guys were, like, perfectly in sync. That was neat. Hey, look. Guy has stuff. Neato. 
I'm also really quickly just gonna expand the houses as well so that uh, we can make sure that we're always having as many people move in as possible. Um, I think I'll expand them over in this way because I know my spawn. I mean, I guess I can just check my spawn real fast. Uh, actually, I can't because I want to be able to teleport back to the underworld. So we're just gonna expand them this way and it'll be a lot easier. You know what? I've decided. Someday, we're gonna make a collection of ore-based dinosaurs so that Todd can have a little house party. I see him there, and he's adorable, and I love him, but he looks a little bit lonely. So I think that we could uh, spruce up his time here by giving him some friends. In fact, we could do that right now. So I'm gonna make these houses. I'm gonna give Todd some friends, because he deserves them. He's a good boy. All right, so there we go. This is Todd with four Ds, Todd with five Ds, Todd with six Ds, and Todd with seven Ds. It's great, I love it. I actually really, really like this way too much. I, I should not have this kind of power <laughs> to create ore-based dinosaurs at will. Oh man. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself a little too much. All right, we've gotten a guide. I'm going to extend the bridge just a little bit more, at least for as long as this nice open area lasts. And then we're going to give it a second attempt. Hopefully, go better than the first. Come on. Slow down with the spawns there, game. Oh, you cannot be serious. Go away. All right, this seems like a good spot. Almost like a cup of lava made just for me. I'm gonna scream if more enemies spawn. Okay, let's let's just go. I feel like you can kind of bait the hungries to move out of the way to get some extra shots in. Oh, feels bad. That was a little bit nasty. stand back. We've got hearts coming. There's my uh, heal. And we can build adrenaline this way. Oh, I'm a big dummy. Alright, I probably threw. Let's use our rage before it's too late, and then immediately get hit. No, I'm throwing so bad. Oh no, I played this way too conservatively. I'm paying the price. Ooh, I went for the hearts, and I got hit for it. Oh, I got it! <laughs> oh, I didn't deserve that win at all. I love it. Oh god, please don't hurt me. No, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. stop. I win. I win. Go away. Go away. You lost. Except your defeat, you're being very unsportsmanlike. Cool! So, Wallflesh second try. I think I 
Did I second try it in the death? I don't know. It's hard. All of my achievements are bugged because of the weird crash that happened during my drowned playthrough. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's up with them. Guys, I got into hard mode for the first time. Are you proud of me? You should be very proud because I worked very hard for it. Anyway, we are officially in hard mode. It is officially super exciting. Um, that fight was kind of clutch, I guess, ish. I don't know, it didn't quite feel clutch at the time because I was just like, all right, I'm trying my hardest, but I'm going to meet my demise in a moment. Um, but yeah, anyway. Spawn rates are increased because, of course, they are. We got Demon Heart, which gives us an extra accessory slot. Um, I left Heart of Darkness on, and I guess I don't hate it because I had Heart Attack for at least a decent chunk of that fight. Uh, we got the Mouth Thrower. Gosh. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. Um, and we got the Laser Rifle, Bone Hammer, Summoner Emblem. Um, so, yeah, that was really nice. I am pretty happy with the second try I win. Anyway, let's go home and uh, take a look at our situation, I suppose, now that we've wrapped up that. I still haven't put the Hellforge in. Oh, I have a spare. All right, well, you can go in there. <laughs> so cool. I think at this point, we're going to go ahead and break some Crimson Altars, and then from there... We're going to get some hard mode ores, and then from there, we'll probably finish up the episode. Um, although, maybe I'll finish up the episode once I break some Crimson Altars, and then after that, uh, go ahead and get the hard mode ores off camera, because it is a little bit grindy and not very interesting, and I don't have too much to talk about today, other than the death mode stuff. Um, uh, I can also talk about the dog speedrun, I suppose, so I should do that real fast. Um, the Devourer of God speedrun, like, routing stuff was going pretty well, um, but we hit an absolute wall at Devourer of Gods himself, which I was somewhat surprised by. I didn't expect it to be as bad as it was, but it is nasty. Um, that fight is super duper hard to not spend, like, 15 minutes plus on without having just the best gear, basically. Um, and a really big arena setup. Well, not necessarily a really big arena setup, but like a, an ideal arena setup, which, you know, takes some time to accomplish. Um, and so I'm going to need to do more stuff on my end to try and figure out a decent way to do it both effectively and quickly, because as it stands, it really doesn't feel like it's a super... I guess it doesn't feel like it's a super interesting speedrun at the moment, because we can't really... Um, what am I trying to say here? We can't really do anything interesting with the run, right? If we're just getting to dog and then getting, like, the most ideal gear. I One of the favorite things about the speedruns for me, at least in normal mode, is that we fight a lot of stuff undergeared, right? Like, we really... Or at least we used to, right? Now, the current crazy speedruns kind of just crush everything. Though S-Cal is arguably a bit undergeared because we don't have Auric Tesla. Um, and, and stuff like that is what's what got my interest in the first place, right? Like, I was like, what what can we really do? What could we potentially pull off quickly um, that would allow us to do a, an interesting speedrun, right? Because, you know, um, we can just... Wow, that, that arc was really nasty. We can just totally get the best gear, fight the boss, and then at, the, at that point, it's like a speedrun to get the best gear and then to not screw up the boss fight, right? Um... And that's probably interesting to some people, but it doesn't really feel that interesting to me, necessarily. Um, so I'm not super into it for for doing that, right? I'd rather try and fight stuff undergeared and, and make it work so that um, it can pull off something both fast and interesting. Um, that's why you don't see me just go for Halibut Cannon at the start of my runs. People oftentimes ask, you know, uh, why don't you go for Halibut Cannon? Wouldn't it be fastest? And it's like, yeah, you're right. I could just go get the Halibut Cannon, but why would I... Well, What's the point, right? At that point, I'm just going and grabbing a halibut cannon, ending the game with the halibut cannon, and then, you know, that is that. And now it's even more uncommon for the record, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I think they made it even less common, which I find amazing. Um, so yeah, I just... That's not super interesting to me. Um, there was also some talk about, uh, in a comment thread a long time ago with somebody, 
where I discuss the usage of Murasama because it can be obtained super early and is technically a post Yaren weapon. And although it was an interesting concept, because, right, obtaining Murasama so early would be kind of neat itself, um, I still don't really want to do it because ultimately, once again, um, I'm just getting something that's kind of sequence breaking and then stomping the universe. And although the premise itself is cool, then I'd be bored for the rest of the run because I'm kind of just smashing everything, right? Um, so I, I, in my speedruns, I'm trying to find a nice balance of the two because I don't really want to be the guy who played normal mode, got Halibut Cannon, and flexed on the world, right? Not that I tend to flex my speedruns. I, I'm, I very much try and take every t opportunity I can to remind people that I am much worse at the game than, like, any no-hitter that you know, right? If someone is no-hit, revengeance, or death mode, they're better than me. They just are. They are crazy good at this game, and I respect that. Um, don't even get me started on, like, Levi and... Yurimir. Like, I am I am not either of those two. I am never going to be either of those two, most likely. They are they are on a whole different level from me. Um So you know, I, I try to make it clear that uh despite completing game quickly, right, I uh what I do is just so much different from what other people do, and it might seem at first like it's just raw skill compacted into a super neat speedrun. But really, it's just understanding the game, using the game mechanics um, to the best of your ability to complete things quickly, and then from there, you know, finishing the game fast. And although in some veins there is a lot of skill involved with that, um, especially now since the percentage guns got nerfed, uh, a lot of it really just comes down to your understanding of the game and knowing what to do when and how to adapt when a situation is not perhaps optimal, because over the course of a three-hour speedrun, you're not going to have every ideal situation handed on a silver platter to you. You need to be able to, like, adapt to a situation uh, and find out what's the fastest thing I could do because this is currently not how it should be. Like, right when you jump into hard mode, I'm just going to go on a huge rant here, so if this is annoying, you can totally skip it. Right when you jump into hard mode, there's, like, five to ten things that you need to do immediately like you get into hard mode and it's like there's no break while flesh is dead i need to start getting ready for lunatic cultists you need to get souls of light get souls of night you need to fish up chaos fish up chaos fit chaos fish yeah that's a tongue twister <laughs> you need to at some point get the ingredients for zerk potion or if you get a blood moon get some blood orbs so that you can make the zerk potion from that um at some point you need to go to the dungeon and get an eidolon tablet you need to kill cryogen you need to kill the mechanical bosses and you need to get your gear to do those things all compacted into what is about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes, right? And that is not easy to do mentally more than anything else. It's all about understanding the game and what you need to do next. It's not about hitting the keyboard as effectively as possible and uh, being a god gamer, really. There's some of that in some spots, but it comes down to understanding the game and analyzing a situation, finding out what's the best thing you can do in said situation, and uh, doing it quickly. That's what speedrunning Terraria is really all about, right? So it's not really fair to compare me to people like uh, Levi. Yurimir, you could, but his videos were less about the speedrun and more about the fact that you could do these crazy things, right? Don't even get me started on Ningishu. Ningishu is nuts. <laughs> Ningishu is the RNG god and or goddess of Terraria, compacted into one run that ended up being very fast because they're also good at the game. Uh, it's absolutely insane. So, Anyway, I think my ramble is done for today. Um, hopefully that wasn't coming off too preachy. I just wanted to give some insight on how the speedrun uh, sort of compares to other things in, in the Terraria ecosystem. Because speedruns are not very popular and I think they're misunderstood a lot of the time. Um, so hopefully that sheds some light on why I frequently say, you know, I'm not Levi, and Levi is way better than me, um, and stuff like that. So hopefully that was informative and interesting to listen to and not super annoying. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying the series so far. I'm super excited to be into hard mode. Again, give me some suggestions for hard mode weapons. I would love to hear what you think is cool and neat, and I will try it out. I think I'm going to go for Cryogen first, so if that influences your uh, decisions at all, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. I will see you guys on Tuesday for the next episode. Of course, a Drowned VOD is being uploaded tomorrow. We have almost caught up to the Twitch stream by now. 
which is pretty exciting. Uh, and yeah, that's all there really is to it for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, it has been an absolute blast recently. I've been having a lot of fun in particular the last few days. And uh, it's just been a really great time. You guys are awesome. I will see you on Tuesday.